Soccer fans, welcome into Zions Bank Stadium for the battle for fourth place in the Western Conference and a chance at a home playoff game. David Horsheim, Landon Southwick, thanks for tuning in tonight on ESPN+. Plus. David, both teams, teams, like I mentioned, need the points tonight to make sure they have an opportunity to stay alive for that home playoff game. I mean, games don't really get much bigger than this right now at this point in the season, Landon. It is basically a playoff game tonight. And the great thing for both of these teams is that they have their destiny in in their hands. It's up to each of them what they want to do and where they want to be in the playoff race. And whoever steps up tonight, they're going to be the ones that are going to be in the driver's seat here in the Western Conference. Orange County has officially clinched a playoff spot with their last weekend win over or, or over OKC Energy. The Monarchs still just below that clinch line, but a victory tonight and three points would give them a chance to clinch a playoff berth. But still, that battle is all about fourth place as Sacramento is involved, as a few teams are really in that mix still. So there's a battle to not only get into the playoffs for the Monarchs, but have a chance to be back here where the Monarchs have been so successful. And with that record that they have here at home since Zion's Bank Stadium has opened, of course the Monarchs, they want that home playoff spot so badly. And that's what make, makes this game so big is it gets them into the playoffs, it clinches that playoff spot for them. But if it can put them closer to getting a playoff game at home, that makes it all the more better for, uh, for the Monarchs tonight. Let's check out the standings in the Western Conference as we're speaking of those. And you can see that whole list that's popping up on your screen. Phoenix already clinched 75 points, and they've been really the team in the USL Championship that has been on fire. But the battle, like we talked about, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh from 48 points to 46 points all the way down to El Paso. A lot of teams still in that mix and a lot of teams still vying to see what they can do. Let's toss it out to our first commercial break and we'll be back with starting lineups next. America First Credit Union, ensuring the financial health of local families and businesses for 80 years. Tonight's match is presented by Steward Healthcare. Steward, world-class healthcare where you live. Visit steward.org. Mountain America, start preparing for your future today with Pitcher Perfect savings accounts from Mountain America. They offer term deposits, youth accounts, retirement savings, and more. Visit macu.com. For banking that always puts the best team on the pitch, Zions Bank is for you. A lot can happen when your sidekick is a dog. Kicker! Kicker! Okay, I got this. That's why you use Zelle in the Mountain America app. It makes sending and receiving money fast and easy. So Kicker and I can keep the adventure going. Zelle is now in the Mountain America mobile app. Quickly send and receive money from almost anyone with a bank account in the U.S. Kicker, my sleeping bag! I've got this. All with the convenience and security of the Mountain America app. here at Zions Bank on this beautiful Wednesday evening. Quite chilly here, David, but let's check out the starting lineup for both sides, starting with Orange County. And when you take a look at this Orange County lineup, keep your eye on Jones and Seton tonight. Seton leads the team with 12 goals, but Jones is hot on his tail with 11 goals. These are going to be the two most dangerous players, and that's who the Monarchs are going to have to know where they're at at all times because they can make things happen for this Orange County lineup. And a strong defense, especially a Due, who's done a phenomenal job this season keeping stuff out of the net after he came over from Hartford Athletic. Let's check out the starting lineup for Hamas and Alave and the Monarchs. Now, we have put this lineup on the screen tonight, Landon, but there with all the international call-ups, with all the first-team players coming down to get minutes before the big playoff game, we're not really sure where guys are going to line up. We're putting our best idea out there, but you always have Old Reliable and Michael Chang and Jack Blake leading this side tonight. And with this being such a crucial game, how are these first team guys that are coming down to get minutes, how are they going to contribute to the Monarch success going forward in the rest of their season? I think that's going to be a really big question that we're going to need answered tonight. 
and a few of these players definitely getting an opportunity to get some legs under them in preparation for the MLS playoffs as Real Salt Lake has already clinched a home playoff game here on the 19th and an opportunity for the likes of Kellen Rowe to make sure he's fit. Referees for tonight's match, Elton Garcia's in the center, Callie Smith, Karsten Gilwald, and our fourth official is Casey Harward. As both teams are out on the pitch, almost ready to go. Monarchs in their all blue kits. Somewhere in the, the Under Armour under, some rocking the gloves. So you can check out the head coach for Orange County, Braden Cloutier. She got a good look at him. All bundled up tonight as it's awfully cold. So Quite a lot colder than Orange County. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit colder here than Orange County. So how will they how will they react to the altitude and how will they react to the temperature and the climate here? That's gonna be a big question Orange County is gonna need to answer as they go forward in this game because a lot of teams have struggled with the altitude, a lot of teams have struggled with the climate here, and let's see how they react. As we're underway here at Zions Bank Stadium between these two Western Conference teams. Monarchs coming into the match 13, 10, and 7, 46.6 in the Western Conference. Orange County 13, 9, and 9, 48 points and a fifth in the Western Conference. Ball going up top towards Chang. Chang rises, and this is maybe a little bit of an unfamiliar role for him sitting as the attacking, the, the number nine in a situation like this. Normally, he's the guy pulling the strings as the ball's in the corner and, and with played the out for a throw in. And with the personnel that has been made available to Hamas Nalave tonight, he's going to trot out a different lineup than what people are used to seeing. He's going to come out with a 5-3-2 with three center backs, and you're going to see two wing backs in Tate Schmidt and Noah Powder with then two guys up top. Tate tries to whip a ball in. He'll get it back from Mulholland. Mulholland's gonna play it back to Ryden. Ryden's gonna swing it along the back line. Holt playing a little wider than he maybe normally does in the center back position. It's tonight is wing night here at, at Zions Bank Stadium. David's definitely gonna be enjoying some wings. Tate keeps the ball in here on the near side. Trying to find somebody in front of him. Finds Mulholland. Mulholland tries to slip a pass up the sideline, cut off by Orange County and Forrester. Jones, he's going to go forward. Jones going to run at the defense. Jones takes a shot, and it's going to be high of frame and, and out of play. And that confidence in yourself is what has allowed this player to score 11 goals this year. He attacks the defense, Landon, sees that opening, he sees the defense dropping off of him, and he figures, hey, first couple minutes of the game, I'm going to, I'm going to test the goalie early, and unfortunately, he did not get the ball on goal, but that's what goal-scoring players do. They take shots, they test goalies, and sometimes they get lucky, sometimes they don't. And one of the things that we haven't seen is this five-back lineup very frequently for this Monarch side, so a challenge is going to be making sure who knows who needs to step and who needs to sit. That is definitely a big challenge when you have three center backs because this is a system that they have not played that much. So, like you said, who's going to step? Who's going to cover? Where do guys need to be? Now, obviously, they have worked on this the last few weeks. So, let's see how it works in an actual game setting where players are under pressure and the other team now is just as good as you and they are moving all over the field, picking out those pockets. The next question is, where does the attack come from for this Monarch side as a bad giveaway? but sliding challenge from Holt to keep possession for the Monarchs who have had a large share of possession to start this game so far. Portillo goes down under a challenge. Garcia blows his whistle. As you can see, head coach Thomas and Alave, interim head coach for the Monarchs in his second stint as interim head coach. Riding with the quick restart. And I think with this lineup, Landon, you're going to see a lot of possession from the defensive third into the midfield third just because there's going to be so many players in those spaces for the Monarchs. The question is going to be, when they get into that attacking third, are they going to be able to get numbers forward to create chaos for the Orange County back line? Are they going to be able to make those runs in behind? Are they going to be able to get crosses in the box and get players on the end of those? That's going to be a really big question facing the Monarchs with this lineup. Orange County, good on the defensive side, only conceded 39 goals on the season compared to the 50 goals the Monarchs have conceded. 
It's Tate. Ball is taken off his feet. And McCoe. In. A good defense there by the Monarchs to disrupt. Seaton was there trying. Powder into Portillo. One of the things that's plagued the Monarchs, David, is bad giveaways in the defensive third. And that's going to be something that's a little scary, especially with the five in the back tonight, and a uh, lot of possession in the back. And when you have a lot of possession, that is one of the things that could be a possibility is giving away bad balls. Ball inside towards Putna, and he collects a shot on goal. Tate's going to try to chase this one out, unable to keep it in. It's a giveaway from the Monarchs off the goal kick, or off the throw it, throw from the keeper. Goal kick throw in. All the same thing. No, just kidding. Ball's going to be swung along the back line of Orange County. Into Quinn. Quinn's going to play a big ball forward, trying to catch the Monarchs' back line sleeping. But Putna is aware. And I think when you have players like Jones and Seed up top, why not play those balls over top of that Monarch back line? You look at the athletic ability of the Monarch back line, you might question it a little bit, especially when you have guys like Jones and Seaton. So play those, play a few balls over top and see what happens. Jack plays it wide to Chang. Chang's gonna get there. Chang inside the 18, Hume plays it out. It'll be a throw in for the Monarchs. As you saw the first kind of real attack with a large share of possession, but nothing really going forward, but the Monarchs were finally able to spring Chang out wide. And this is what I talked about, is when they get that ball forward, then, and where are those numbers gonna come from for the Monarchs right now? Chang was up in that box by himself. Even if he won that ball, he really had nowhere to go with it. And don't sleep on this Orange County team. Like we mentioned, three very capable, potent attacking players, Seton, Jones, and Quinn. 12, 11, and seven goals, respectively. They're a side that's, that's dangerous, great defending, and dangerous on the counterattack. Powder. Into Rowe. Rowe finds Chang. Chang tries to slip a pass to him. Off simple possession. Pressure still from the Monarchs. And that's gonna be one of the things they're gonna apply, heavy pressure up top real quick after they lose it, something Hamas and Alave has really instilled in this side more recently. And I think when you come out with this lineup, it's gonna, the question is, where's, where's the pressure gonna come, with, come from in those areas, Landon? When the ball gets wide, who's gonna uh, apply that pressure? Is it gonna be the wing back? Is it gonna be the left center midfielder? And that's where I'm really curious to see what the Monarchs do here in this formation. Ball inside, Quinn. Ball's going to be switched to Forrester. Two goals on the season. Had a goal last week against, or excuse me, on the weekend against Orange County. It's also named to the USL Championship Team of the Week. So he had himself a game, his second goal of the season. Eighth minute of play, still scoreless here on this Wednesday evening. Ball slipped in. Amco back. Ball on top of the 18, no one home, and Powder collects. And as you saw right there, right there is that miscommunication between the wing back, the center mid, and the center back is who's going to take that runner through. And Caleb Ride, unfortunately, who had to eventually cover, he wasn't sure if he had to apply the pressure initially. Luke's going to try to keep it in. Orozco kind of slowed up in his run. I think he thought it was out the whole way, but it was closer than it should have been. And you can never give up on balls on this turf because... Turf does funny things, the balls, and you gotta always know what's gonna happen. Hume. Inside to Quinn. Hume gets it back to Orozco. Former US international. Ball in, cut off by Portillo. Monarch's gonna try to counter, no numbers. They'll play it back to Powder. And that's gonna be one of the challenges with so much of a defensive presence. Can you get numbers to go forward? Bad giveaway, and Ryden's gonna to try to step in. Blue is gonna chase forward. Mulholland gets back. Then Wolfgang picks up his head, plays it back stick, looking top of the 18, cut off by the Monarchs. Calls for a foul from Orange County's bench, but nothing there. Portillo. 
He's going to look to switch. And I think when you play with guys like Kellen Rowe and Michael Chang up top, you're going to look to you're going to look to find their feet, and then you can find your width in your wing backs. But when you play players that can control the ball, you find their feet first. You're never going to play them over top. You're going to play your wing backs in behind the back line. But you have to start that play by finding Rowe and Chang's feet first. And something the Monarchs have done. You've seen quite a few errant passes tonight. It's one of the better teams in pack at pass accuracy in the USL Championship with 83% pass accuracy. Second in the USL Championship, but tonight it has not been on display so far. And one thing, that's one thing that Douglas Martinez brings to this lineup is you can play a ball over top, you can play an errant pass, and because of his athletic and physical ability, he can get to those passes sometimes. But tonight with Chang and Rowe up top, I don't think they have that same physical ability that Martinez has. And you love to have Martinez, who's been injured and is also away with the national team right now. But he's one of those figures that you would expect to see here as we continue along late in this season. Even with his contract with Real Salt Lake. Emko. Emko here on the near side. Back to Hume. Back into Quinn. Orozco, Forrester, possession now starting to build a little bit more for Orange County. Orange County is definitely finding a little bit more of the possession along the back line, but they are having trouble finding those penetrating passes to break lines right now because of there's so many bodies in the middle of the field. It's going to be really hard for them to find that space. Their space tonight's probably going to be over the back line to Jones and Seton if they can find that space between the back line and the goalie trying to cap capitalize on the maybe miscommunications or lack of time in that five back. I know you can speak about it as a former MLS center back. The challenge is, is determining when and who needs to step at all times. And not only as runs are coming straight down the gut from the two main Jones and Seton, but those wing players making diagonal runs into your space. And it's so important, this is what we talked about earlier, it is so important, Landon, to not give bad balls away because you're clogging up that middle so much that if you give passes away, there's going to be Orange County players there to pounce on those mistakes, and that's what you don't want. Free kick for the Monarchs. Captain Jack Blake. Ball sprayed wide. Tate had to head it in as there was nothing in front of him. Tate's going to win the second header. Options, options for him. Luke's trying to go forward. Forrester was there to win possession. Ball forward, headed by Ryden. Settled temporarily by Orange County. Portillo in the center of the park. Former Monarchs captain. Had some success with this team last year and signed that contract with the first team. Chang up over top, flag is up. But sometimes you have to start to take some challenges going forward. You have to take those chances because you have to keep the Orange County back line on their toes a little bit. If you keep playing in front of them and keep playing in front of them, they're going to keep creeping forward and take that space away. Sometimes you have to challenge them with a ball over top just to let them know that you are still capable of playing those balls. And now they might take a few steps backwards to be ready for it and give you that space in the middle that you want to play. One of the challenges for Chang is Chang is typically used to going wide and playing a ball in. There's not too much height or opportunity to play it in. Bad ball back inside the box. And a huge opportunity there for Seton as he puts it wide. And right there is both things that we talked about, Landon. A long ball over top and then a bad ball in the back. As you see here in the replay, the header comes across. Now Seton, when he goes back and watches that replay, he's going to be very upset with himself because when you score 12 goals on the season, it's because you're taking chances like that right there. and He's going to be very upset that he missed it. Row. He'll turn, open up space, looks at the defender. He'll cut inside towards Powder. Powder back out wide to Jack Blake. Jack Blake plays it in the box and headed just wide as Mulholland found himself in a little bit of an opening there and an opportunity to put that on goal. 
Select is the official ball supplier of the USL Championship and many of the finest leagues in the world since 1947. Select has been the leader in soccer ball quality and innovation for the latest Select products and special offers. Please visit SelectSportAmerica.com. 14th minute of play, still scoreless. Here's the sun has set, the lights are on, and a beautiful but cold night here at Zions Bank Stadium. This is a beautiful fall night, Landon. This is, I love nights like this. This is a night that you should be playing soccer on. Holt, he's gonna chase down into the corner, Jones. Jones gonna size him up. Jones plays it in towards the box and defended by Holt, but it'll be a corner kick for Orange County, their first of the match. And right now, Orange County, they're starting to find that success with those balls in behind the back line. As you see here, he finds that one-on-one -on -one situation with Eric Holt. Eric Holt does a fantastic job against a player that is much more athletic than him in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and he blocks across. But Orange County, they're starting to find that space more and more. Corner kiss going to come from the far side. Swung in with the right foot. High ball towards Hume. And cleared away by the Monarchs. They're going to clear their line and reset is Dewey. He's going to keep the ball at his feet, allow the lines to get back, his defense to get in front of him. Rowe is going to push the ball wide, try to force the ball to come in the middle. Quinn plays it forward towards Seton. Duke. It's going to come along the back line of Orange County. Here to the near side. Mulholland's going to apply the pressure. Jones, he'll turn and face. Monarchs applying a lot of pressure. Can they win possession? And now a that is way by Orange County. Right there, Landon. That is excellent communication between Kalen Rye and Tate Schmidt and Luke Mulholland. They did a great job of rotating and passing players on, which we didn't see in the first few minutes, and they just pulled it off excellent there. Now that was textbook rotation and switching players. Good little skill check there from Chang is a handball by Orange County. Textbook defending is going to come into play as Orange County has caused a little bit of a fit to this Monarchs back line. You've seen a couple balls played up over top to that far side, trying to open up some of the attacking players of Orange County. Powder settles. He's going to run at the defense. Cuts inside. Foul just outside the area. Looks to be just on the edge of the box. And it'll be an opportunity coming for the Monarchs. Now, is it going to be Noah Powder? Is it going to be Jack Blake? I'm afraid to say anything because I have taken so much stick from, from Jack Blake that I, when I said last time that he wasn't going to take it. So wh whoever takes it, this is a great opportunity for the Monarchs in a great position right now. Can they make the most of it? 17th minute of play. Noah Powder is going to stand over this one. Noah Powder, left-footed defender, former Orange County player just outside of the 18, almost on that corner of the 18. Now, with him being a former Orange County player, I would assume that quite a few players out here are going to know what he is capable of doing in this situation. Orange County is going to hold their line just level with the PK spots. Couple man wall in front of Noah Powder. Dewey on his line. Ref's going to blow his whistle. Powder's going to step over it. Powder shot on goal and never got that down. Now, if you look at the previous free kicks he has taken, his approach to the ball was different there. The free kicks that he has had success on, he has approached it in a more straight on manner. He was trying to curl this one instead of more dip it. I think he's going to be a little disappointed when he goes back and watches that landing because he's, he knows that he can do better. And some of the challenges we talk about, and, and you can speak to this, is getting it a free kick that close, sometimes it's just a challenge to get it up and down that quick. And that's why when I saw Noah Powder stepping up, he had the, he has that ability to hit that knuckleball to get it up and down. And I'm a little disappointed that he didn't try to do that. Ball played in, headed and kept live. But, that, but that's probably why I didn't take free kicks in my career, Landon. Center back, <laughs> Quinn goes forward. Quinn takes a shot, a driven ball, and way wide of frame. Thank goodness you didn't take free kicks. Having your height inside the box. A lot of birds lived because I didn't take free kicks. <laughs> <laughs> and 
they are thankful they're still alive. <laughs> Chang gets it wide to Powder, just across the midfield stripe. Powder, little skill check there. Back out wide to Blake. Into Portillo. Portillo's gonna pick up his head, looking for attacking options. But it's kind of clogged in that midfield space, so he's gonna play it wide to Blake. Back to Powder, and a foul on the touchline on the far side as Blake goes down. And that's one of the things, if you're gonna hold on to the ball long, Orange County is gonna start to be frustrated as you keep possession for that long, lo those long bouts. And especially like when you see in the replay here, like you said, we're, they're holding on to the ball. So Jack Blake is going to take a hard tackle there and he has to be prepared for it. Tate's going to go forward. Tate inside the 18. Tate cuts in, trying to find Chang, redirected towards goal. And Chang goes at goal a second time. But it's going to go out for a corner, the first of the match for the Monarchs. As you see in the replay here, Tate Schmidt, great first touch towards the goal, which puts him in a great spot to play the ball across. Now, a few deflections in there, but Chang, Johnny on the spot to try to put away the second ball. Wasn't good enough, but now Monarchs have a corner kick. And when you have guys like Kalen Ryden, Conrad Plua, Eric Holt, guys that are very capable of getting on the end of this. Hume almost put that in the back of his own net. Powder, short corner into Portillo. Portillo's gonna serve it up. Inside the 18, Hume defends well. Portillo gets a second ball inside the box, but the line had stepped up. Orange County has a chance to go forward quickly, but it'll be slowed up by Dewey. Ben Wolfgang. He'll get it back. Back in the middle of the pitch. Hume. Orozco. He's going to survey his options. Back to Hume. Center backs really haven't been challenged. No one really to run forward and maybe try to apply speed and test the center backs, but they've got to keep on an eye on those runs out wide. That's right. And when you need your speed and your runs to come from those wing backs right now for the Monarchs because Kellen Rowe and Michael Chang are not exactly known for their speed and they're not going to run by players, but they can control that first ball. Ball up over top to Chang and the flag's up. Looks like he was almost even on that one, but maybe a, stetch, a step or so ahead. But Rowe and Chang, they can bring that first ball down, play into the, the trailing players, and then play over the top to your, to your wing backs that are making the runs. But... That's, they need, we need to see more of that right now, Landon. You've seen it a few times from Schmidt, and that's when they've had uh, their chances. Can the Monarchs do a little bit more of it? It's going to take a second to get this one back going. 23rd minute of play. Still scoreless. Tonight in this battle for fourth place. Both teams desperately want to see three points tonight. Look, yes, hey, look. Orozco, he's going to go forward, has space in front of him on the turf. Keeps it as his feet. Schmidt's going to come in and apply pressure. Multiple players and a bad giveaway there by Orange County. Chang, nice getaway there. Keeps possession. He's got multiple players around him. Get it, gets it out wide to Jack Blake. Jack Blake's going to move forward. Rowe running in front of him. Blake sends it in. Looks for a handball, and it's gonna go out and it'll be a throw in in the corner for the Monarchs. And anytime you can get Seton and Jones facing away from your goal and going backwards, you're gonna find success because Seton going away from his goal, tries to turn and hit a pass, but turns it over and allows the Monarchs to attack quickly. You have to wonder if Orange County wasn't really ready for this five in the back. There's a clogged midfield and defensive third that is really just confusing for the runs of Orange County so far. For as many times as we go out to watch practice, Landon, I don't think we were ready for five at the back, but the Monarchs, obviously, they've been working on this for a little while behind closed doors. Ball in from Holtz, cut off by Orange County. Giveaway, though. Jack Blake picks up his head into Chang. Chang shot up and over the crossbar as he had an opportunity and was right in the place he needed to be, just couldn't keep it on frame. And that's the combination you're gonna look between Chang and Jack Blake. As you see, Jack Blake, little cheeky layoff here to Michael Chang, but he's gonna be disappointed with his attempt at goal there. 
He knows he should do better. But that's the combination you want between Ro Chang and Jack Blake at the top of the box. You want those three guys combining, trying to find those little spaces between defenders. And those are your creative players tonight. And you may not have the likes of Douglas Martinez, who's very capable of scoring at all times, but so is Michael Chang. He's just not your guy that's maybe going to be your true nine. He's going to play more like that 10 and have some creative flair as he gets towards goal. Orozco plays it to Hume. Inside to Van Wolfgang. Powder keeps it in to Jack Blake. Jack Blake goes down. Thomas and Alave looking for the foul. Monarchs retreat with numbers. Ball played inside. Pushed away by Luke Mulhollins. Fans, you can continue to enjoy the USL on ESPN through the 2022 season. The USL is excited to announce that Championship and League One will remain with the leader in sports for three more years. ESPN Plus will continue. Kellen Rowe takes a shot just wide. A nice look there from Kellen Rowe here in the 26 minutes. ESPN Plus will continue to be the home of all things USL, and at least 19 games a year will be featured on ESPN Network, family of networks, including nine games on ESPN Deportes. Continue to follow, support, and watch for your club on ESPN and ESPN Plus. You like the idea from Kellen Rowe there, as he had to take a chance. It wasn't a bad idea. Forrester, nice cut inside. Fouled, but he'll keep going forward. Advantage played. Ben Wolfgang defended by Portillo. Good communication there. As Tate's defending nicely. Ball inside the box. As Ryden had the right angle. Maybe slow down the run there of Orange County and it rolls to Putna. And you can hear Cle the, the Orange County head coach there urging his player when he receives that ball, drive at the defense. There are so many defenders back there that those little balls in behind are gonna be really hard to play. You have to drive at them and force them to step out of their position to create that space. Make them commit to something. Kellen Rowe keeps it in here on the near side. Rowe trying to play it in to Chang. Chang did not see the run. The same run that Rowe did. Ryden gets caught as that header just misses Jones, catches him square, kind of in that mid, mid region, maybe a little higher than the gut. Schmidt. So Orange County's trying to push up their line. Monarchs have quite a few midfielders sitting along the back line of Orange County. Mulholland. All stolen from him. He wins the challenge back into Jack Blake. Jack Blake trying to go towards goal, come on, come on. but cut off. Portillo does a good job to help out Holt there and keep possession for the Monarchs. So you're going to get a replay look. Jack Blake was just about to take a crack. Just a second off. Jack Blake is the guy that you want with the ball at the top of the 18 because we know he can put those away every day of the week, but just a last second save from Orange County. Ball trying to find powder out wide. Orange County's gonna go forward now. Ryden cuts it off. Nice job reading the run of Jones. Schmidt inside to Mulholland. Mulholland to Plua. And you can see Mulholland there. He's He's asking his defenders, let's keep possession of this ball a little bit. It's been back and forth now for the last few minutes, and the Monarchs, they need to get control of this ball to create those openings and create those chances again. Ball played wide to Powder. Powder settles nicely. Right on the touch on the defense there was Contour. Jack Blake, he'll pick up his head, takes a shot on goal, and that one's going to be over by maybe a foot or two, but it had the pace. That's one of those where maybe Jack Blake should have been five feet further back because it was starting to dip as it went over the goal. And as you can see here, he connects very well, but too close to the goal at that distance for him. And that's a tough 
Sean as a keeper, maybe to even read as Due was kind of frozen. Maybe he knew it was over, but didn't move a whole ton. Plua plays it back to Putna. To Ryden. Kalen inside to Jack Blake. Monarchs are content having possession and trying to look for those little open windows to get forward. Powder into Portillo. Out wide to Schmidt. Schmidt takes a little bit of a heavy touch to get around. He's gonna battle for the second and third ball as he settles nicely. Ball in towards Powder. And out comes Dewey. But a good look there for the Monarchs. Well, that's one way to have a combination play to go forward with Tate Schmidt heading it to himself three times. Luke Mulholland, swim move on a player, and then plays a great ball through, but just a little heavy. I think we're going to look for a little bit prettier combinations next time for them, but hey, that worked. And one of the things you'd like so far is Ryden's going to get his back ridden. We are out in Harriman, home of the Cowboys. Giveaway in the midfield. Seaton picks up his head. Monarch's going to apply pressure. Nowhere to go forward. Then Wolfgang out wide to Contour. Side to Quinn. Still scoreless here in the 31st minute. And the, the Monarchs have been very satisfied giving up possession to the Orange County back line tonight because they know that they're clogging up all the other passing lanes, as you just saw there. The right back to Miko, he gives it away because he literally has no other options besides to try to squeeze balls into spaces, and the Monarchs are picking those off every time. And it's those tight spaces, but here's the thing. If they continue, there may be an opportunity to maybe catch the Monarchs off guard, but the Monarchs have as of the last 15, 20 minutes, have really done a good job communicating and shifting. They have definitely figured things out after the first 10 minutes of the game there. Powder, can he keep it in? He'll keep it in towards Jack Blake on the touchline. Blake back towards Chang and cleared away by Orange County. Ball forward to Seaton. Seaton goes backwards. Hume to Orozco. He'll open up, looking forward. Ryden does a good job to apply pressure Once again, to keep Orange him going County backwards. Has no options. They play that ball into the forward's feet. He has to go straight backwards with it, and it's still with the back four of Orange County because the Monarchs are doing such a good job of clogging up those lanes. Orange County needs to try and look over the top again to open up the space in the middle of the field. Orozco, same exact play we saw a second ago. That switch here to the near side. Portillo's going to step out to defend. Same exact play, straight in the Jones' feet. Monarchs have won it again. Orange County, they're going to need to be a little bit more creative to break down the back five of the Monarchs. Tate tries to play it forward. Not probably the best pass, as it was cut off by Orange County. But at that midfield stripe, again, not really in a dangerous position. Orange County's been pretty content playing along their back line. Still trying to figure out where the holes are in this Monarchs defense. For a few minutes there, it was on that left side, on that far left side for the Monarchs. And that's closed down here in the last few. With the way, that, with the way that Orange County is lined up in this 4-3-3, Things are very robotic with the runs, with the movement of all the players. We're going to need to see just a little bit more creativity from the forwards and from those midfielders of Orange County because they need to move the Monarchs around a little bit, create those spaces, create those openings, and then once you do that, you can exploit them. Orange County, like I mentioned, 13, 9, and 9 on the season. 4, 6, and 5 away from California. Monarchs 9, 2, and 3 here at Zions Bank Stadium. 
like we've mentioned, always very efficient here. And have been ever since it opened in 2018. Ball forward. Nice ball there. Monarch's in trouble. Opportunity. Holt gets back. A good job to poke it back to Putna. But that was a scary opportunity as Orange County had two players looking towards goal. And Holt was the only one there waiting. Flag stays down. Seaton on top of the 18. Shot off the post. Orange County almost went up 1-0. But it comes off the post. As Putna needs to be going and kissing that thing. And Orange County very unlucky to not be up 1-0 in this game right now. Great work from Seaton to get out wide. And instead of playing that ball along the top of the six, he cuts it back to the top of the 18 to a streaking Orange County player. But that's sometimes, that's the magic of being at home is that those shots go your way sometimes. And Orange County very hard done not to be up 1-0. And Wolfgang with the shots and the opportunity. Best opportunity for either team tonight. And it's off the post. Monarchs are going to be playing four games, including tonight, in 11 days, which is going to be the challenge. Can they keep the legs fresh? As you can imagine, Hamas Alave, no matter what, will use all three substitutions to keep his side as fresh as possible. Ball inside. Back to Van Wolfgang. Inside, running at goal, pushed away, still in the area, and cleared away by the Monarchs. Miscommunication in back. No foul call as Schmidt keeps it in. Schmidt will play it forward to Chang. Ball's behind him, and almost he was able to get that back heel and maybe flick it forward. But Chang put all he had into that one, as you could see the replay as Mulholland's signaling to Schmidt that he maybe needs to be a little tighter in. Definitely, and there's that miscommunication again, Landon, that the Monarchs for the last 20, 25 minutes have done a great job at. Just one breakdown in communication allows Van Wolfgang to get between the wing back and the center back and gets a great shot on goal. But hey, Putna, up to the task again. And he's going to need to continue to be up to the task here as a corner kick, the second in the match coming for Orange County. Quinn will trot out to take the corner kick for Orange County. Some jostling inside the box. Elton Garcia is going to warn a few players. Quinn will swing it in with the left foot. Keep an eye on Hume. Has the height inside the box, headed away by Ryden. Not all the way. Ryden goes up for the second one and wins that one as well. Contour plays it all the back, all the way back to Douay. Tune in to ESPN3 Saturday, October 19th at 1 p.m. Mountain time for a special game of the week to close out the 2019 season. A home playoff match is at stake when Real Salt Lake host, or excuse me, Real Monarchs host Sacramento Republic FC. The winner hosts a home playoff match while the loser potentially goes to the play-in game. Catch all the drama Saturday, October 19th at 1 p.m. on ESPN3. Game's on ESPN3. Ben Wolfgang. The best opportunity, but he tries to play that forward to Miko, and it goes out for a goal kick. Both teams pretty physical. Monarchs with 73 yellows this season. Orange County with 69. Second and fifth respectfully in the USL championship this season. It's not one of those games where you'll just be drinking a pumpkin light spice latte and just hanging out. The battle is gonna be won as both teams are very physical. And sometimes you need, you need to be physical and you need to impose your will upon the other team and set the tone for the match and 
tonight we really haven't seen that from either teams. They've both been very more possession oriented, playing football, playing it uh, uh, the way it should be played and not, you know, imposing their will on either side right now. The ball goes out. Good look there from Seton and Jones. You can tell the combination play between those two guys as Seton mentioned to Jones that he needed to keep running, was gonna flick it on, flicked it on nicely, but just a little too far out in front. Powder, as Orange County has dominated here in the last five or 10 minutes. Portillo. You can tell some adjustments have been made by Orange County in the midfield as they're tracking a little bit differently towards Mulholland and Portillo. And like, like we said, we, Orange County wasn't expecting the Monarchs to come out this way. It has taken them now about 30 minutes to really figure out this formation of the Monarchs, and they've taken control of the game here in the last 10 minutes. And you can imagine with some halftime adjustments, both teams are maybe even going to try to counter each other once again. See who can get the upper hand. Chang's going to chase this one back towards Douay. Douay's going to play it high and long. It's going to hold up in the air. Tate plays it back to Ryden. Mulholland picks up his head, plays it wide to Powder. Maybe tries to get a little too fancy with that. He tries to bring it in with the right foot and maybe swing it around, but it goes out of play. David, we've talked about this a little bit early on in, this, in the day, in the evening, but the standings are so tight in the Western Conference. And really that's what makes this game so important is because there are so many moving parts. A win is a six point swing for whoever wins those games. And like we have talked about all season long, Zion's Bank Stadium has been a fortress for the Monarchs and that's why that home playoff game is so important. Opportunity shot on goal and up over frame as Forrester was trying to get his third of the season. Orange County sitting on 49 points in fourth in the USL, and then dropping down to 11th and 12th is 41 points. So it is eight points between that fourth and 12th in the West. Quinn. Stand over the free kick. Monarchs have scored 62 goals this season, fourth in the USL, but unable to muster anything great so far in this one. Portillo, or excuse me, Schmidt into Plua, quickly out to Powder. Has more played in a midfield role today. And really, that ball from Conrad Plua is an excellent ball, and that's really what breaks this Orange County team open, is by Conrad Plua skipping out defenders and finding Noah Powder immediately. Rowe drives it inside the box, takes a deflection. Blake, Chang, back out to Rowe. Rowe, Chang to Blake, Chang gets it back. Chang's gonna pick up his head. Looks like he might shoot for a second, gets it wide to Schmidt. Schmidt. Back inside to Blake, and the flag is up, I think on Tate as he was out wide. 43rd minute, offside on the Monarchs. And you can't have those mental letdowns in that situation, Land. And the Monarchs do a great job of building up from their defensive third into the attacking third. They have control of the ball, control of the situation, and a mental letdown from a player that didn't take two steps to the right to stay on sides, turns the ball over to Orange County. The Monarchs cannot waste opportunities. The flag here up on the near side. They are Callie Smith has her flag up as we have another offside call. Quick restart for the Monarchs. Ryden looking in the midfield to Blake. Blake plays a big ball back to Putna. Putna's gonna have to react quickly. In bad giveaway. Opportunity for Orange County and scuffed there by Van Wolfgang. And man, that was gifted to Orange County, but unable to capitalize. And we talked about it. You can't waste those opportunities, Landon, because you're 
You're not going to get many of them, and it's going to be hard to break down this back five. So when you get those opportunities, you have to take them. So critically important. And Van Wolfgang was the one that hit the hit the post earlier on. I know he's going to be kicking himself on that one as he's taken out. Portillo is taken out by Forrester. Another foul on Orange County. We're approaching halftime here at Zions Bank Stadium. Still scoreless between these two sides. Orange County with the better of the opportunities so far. Ryden into Chang. Chang settles, finds Rowe. Rowe with a trying to be a little fancy. And Orange County is going to go forward. Holt cuts it off. Portillo forward to Chang. Heavy touch from Chang. He's able to keep it in. You can tell it's playoff time because guys are running all out. For 50-50 for balls, for balls that are close to being out of bounds, guys are leaving it all out there so far in the first half. And really, that's what you want to see from guys, and it's such an important game. Kellen Rowe trying to find Jack Blake, slips it in backwards, but he wasn't there. And no stoppage time here at Zions Bank Stadium. Scoreless here at the half between these two Western Conference opponents in the battle for fourth place. David, thoughts on the first half so far? A little slow of a start from the Monarchs, but they figured out their formation and they did a great job for about the middle 25 to 30 minutes of that game. But then Orange County, they figured out the Monarchs formation and they got the better of the chances in the game. Can the Monarchs, as they get the ball forward, can they figure out a way to get better chances on goal the way Orange County has? And Orange County with the best opportunity is Van Wolfgang midway through the half, drilled the post. But other than that, no real chances for the Monarchs as we're going to toss it to our first commercial break and we'll be back with first half analysis next. America First Credit Union, ensuring the financial health of local families and businesses for 80 years. Tonight's match is presented by Steward Healthcare. Steward, world-class healthcare where you live. Visit steward.org. Mountain America, start preparing for your future today with Pitcher Perfect savings accounts from Mountain America. They offer term deposits, youth accounts, retirement savings, and more. Visit macu.com. For banking that always puts the best team on the pitch, Zions Bank is for you. Okay, people, it's Ford Truck Month. And you know what that means. The best deals on America's best-selling trucks for 42 years straight. And with over 28 million sold, isn't it time you join the stampede? Now get a Ford F-150 with 0 for 72 financing plus 1,000 trade assist cash or get over 13,000 in total savings.
lot can happen when your sidekick is a dog. Kick her. Kick her. Hey, I got this. That's why you use Zelle in the Mountain America app. It makes sending and receiving money fast and easy. So Kicker and I can keep the adventure going. Zelle is now in the Mountain America mobile app. Quickly send and receive money from almost anyone with a bank account in the U.S. Kicker, my sleeping bag. I've got this. All with the convenience and security of the Mountain America app. For the past 42 years, and with over 28 million sold, more people have put their hard-earned money on a Ford F-Series truck than any other pickup in America. Yeah, I'd say that's money well spent. It's Ford Truck Month, America. Time to join the stampede. Now get a Ford F-150 with 0 for 72 financing plus 1,000 trade assist cash, or get over 13,000 in total savings. All these experiences are new, and the new experience is always the most exciting because it's something that you've never been a part of before. And I think that's one of the biggest draws of Greenville is, is to come in and to be a part of the, the beginning of something great. Well, Greenville has officially been awarded a professional soccer team. There is a big soccer presence in the upstate, and they just needed a team to rally behind. It's like, oh wow, like this is actually, this, this is real. Um, and I still didn't really grasp how big it was going to be. Mohammed racing the other way. Cuts it back. Good luck. Shot coming. And then Carlos Gomez, his fourth in two matches. 
And does that seal the deal on the three points for the triumph? A club is more than just the players, coaches, and front office. It's it's the fans. It's a whole club. We're new. No one, you know, no one really knows what we're about. They don't know, you know, what we have to offer and showing them that we offer more than just 90 minutes a week, uh, you know, on a Friday or Saturday night uh, says everything. He's going to go at goal. Shot and a goal! A lot can happen when your sidekick is a dog. Kicker! Kicker! Okay, I got this. That's why you use Zelle in the Mountain America app. It makes sending and receiving money fast and easy. So Kicker and I can keep the adventure going. Zelle is now in the Mountain America mobile app. Quickly send and receive money from almost anyone with a bank account in the U.S. Kicker, my sleeping bag! I've got this. All with the convenience and security of the Mountain America app. We're back here in Harriman, Utah. The Rail Zions Bank Academy inside Zions Bank Stadium. Storylines for tonight. Monarchs, like we mentioned, including tonight, four games in 11 days and a tough schedule, especially due to the passing of the Austin Bowl player. And, and condolences go out to that family as well as that organization. It's a very sad story, but move that game to this coming week but provides a little bit of a challenge for the Monarchs with that schedule. Orange County already clinched a playoff berth, so they're good and clear in the playoffs, but now is the battle for fourth place. Monarchs, like we've mentioned all throughout the night, will clinch a playoff berth with a victory tonight. USL Team of the Week, like we mentioned, Forrester on the USL Team of the Week for Orange County, and a good list, eight of the 11 tonight on this list from the Western Conference as the USL Championship Player of the Week, Marcin Kowski, JT Marcin, Marcin Kowski from Reno, had himself a game, nine saves in a shutout, vict or shutout, shutout draw versus El Paso. Let's check out the scores around the USL, or the upcoming scoreboard, excuse me, no games in action tonight. El Paso Locomotive, Austin Bold in a battle that will affect these two teams. And like we mentioned, the upcoming game for the Monarchs, Phoenix Rising and the Monarchs, Orange County and, or and Sacramento Republic on October 12th. So some games that are really going to throw this mix and, and change perspectives of what's happening here as you see standings through tonight's. Um, with the battle, like we mentioned, for that fourth place, that home playoff game, is, as Reno's really in the clear, Fresno's in the clear, and Phoenix rising. Nothing really going to change there. Maybe the flip-flop between second and third. But other than that, that four through ten is really wide open. And that's why this game is so important, Landon. I mean, the Monarchs, they, they got to come through here in the second half and, and get this win tonight because it is a, you know, they need those points. So, I mean, that's, that's, all, that's all that can be said about the Monarchs right now is that they need a big second half because they need these points to get that playoff berth. Orange County with seven shots, two on goal. Monarchs with six shots, none on goal. So, like we mentioned, really no great opportunities for the Monarchs, but Orange County has seen themselves in a position twice 
and maybe three times where they didn't get off the shot by Van Wolfgang, but great opportunities for Orange County. Can they capitalize here in the second half? And that's really going to be the question for Orange County. They figured things out in the last 10, 15 minutes of that first half. They created quite a few good chances in that first half. Now, in the second half, when they do create those chances, can they capitalize on them? Can they finish those chances that they get because they did not do that in the first half? And then on the flip side of that with the Monarchs, when they get the ball forward, Landon, can they get more numbers into the attack, more numbers into the, into the box and get good chances on goal? Because right now, they're keeping a ton of possession of the ball, but really there's no end product. And it's a lot of the combination play that we've seen work so far for the Monarchs. It really hasn't been playing crosses inside the box because there really hasn't been anybody home to receive the crosses. And really, that's the problem with a 5-3-2 formation is, yes, you're going to keep a ton of the ball, a ton of possession, but you have to see that commitment from your wingbacks, your midfield three, and your front two to really get forward and get into the box, create those chances. We saw a few combination plays between Michael Chang, Kellen Rowe, and Jack Blake, but we're gonna need to see more of those in the second half, especially on top of the box, where we know Jack Blake can finish anything. And Jack Blake and Michael Chang are really gonna have to step up if they wanna get the full three points for this side, because the offense, and we've mentioned it all night, has been maybe a little lackadaisical from what it's used to. Second half underway. Monarch's going to be moving from left to right across your screen here on ESPN+. Plus. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Whether you're in California or here locally in Utah or whether you're anywhere else around the country, we appreciate you joining us. David Horse, decade-plus MLS veteran. I'm Landon Southwick, and we'll take you along the call for this second half. Decade-plus. That makes you kind of sound old. <laughs> it makes me feel old too, pal. These <laughs> knees feel like they played in the league for 20 years. Foul, on the, foul by the Monarchs. Orange County with the free kick. They're going to send some numbers forward. Monarchs are going to hold their line on top of the 18. Quinn will stand over the free kick. Kellen Rowe with one man wall. Quinn plays it inside the box, headed away by Powder. Out to Rowe. Rowe maybe with an accidental skill check as Blake's gonna apply some pressure. Two Orange County players running towards it. Played back to Duque, or Duque. Quinn, again, trying to get one up over top. They're trying to test that back line early, which is what you need to do. If you don't do that, they're gonna keep creeping forward like they did in that first half. Putna. Forward to Blake. Settled. In opportunity out wide. Towards goal, takes a deflection. And the Monarchs are gonna be back to defending. Rowe, trying to play outlet to Powder and frustration coming from Rowe. Powder has a nice come smile on, on his face, on. but the ball was too far out in front. Hume to Orozco, who's sitting very far back, and I've noticed that most of the night he's been quite a bit further back, kind of as that drop-off relief for Hume. Cut off Mulholland. No changes for either side at the half, as both coaches are going to elect to go a little bit further with their starting 11s. Schmidt tries to slip it through. Blake to Portillo. Portillo to Rowe, takes a slight touch over to Powder. Powder, left foot running at the defense. Back to Rowe. Orange County looking for the flag to come up. Rowe's gonna go towards the touch line. Rowe plays it inside the box. Back towards Schmidt. In towards Chang. Chang unable to keep possession. And Dewey will collect. A battle for fourth place in the Western Conference on the line tonight. After tonight, Orange County with two games left against Sacramento on the 12th and Fresno at home on the 19th. Monarchs with three games left after tonight at Phoenix Rising on October 12th. 
versus Austin Bold on Wednesday the 16th, and then versus Sacramento back here at home on the 19th to end out the season. Contour here with the ball. Throw in looking in towards Seton. Headed away. Another throwing coming for Orange County. Orange County's got their bench up warming up. So do the Monarchs. Contour looks to have a big throw. Everybody inside the box. Takes a short throw, it's gonna get it back, plays it back in the box, into the mix. Takes it a flexion, and Schmidt's gonna play it out towards the line, trying to find Rowe forward, but no one there, as that pass is cut off. Schmidt's gonna be called for the foul and shown yellow. Not sure what Seton's coming over, as Seton sees yellow. Not the smartest decision to come over and come after Schmidt, nothing there, but he's gonna see yellow as both players see yellow in the 50th. And as you see here in the replay, Schmidt frustrated that he just gave that pass away. He sees that ball floating up in the air and he sees it as an opportunity to really set the tone here for the second half, but he does it illegally by going through the player's head instead of through their body landing. And Seton has to be careful because I am all about players sticking up for their teammates, but you have to do it in a manner that does not cause you to get a yellow card because now for the next 40 minutes in this game, Seton has to play kind of tentatively a little bit knowing that he has that yellow card. He might not be able to go after balls, go in for tackles that he might normally go in for because he got a stupid yellow card. And that's one of those things you hate to see if you're a head coach. Orange County's gotta be frustrated on their bench because now he's a the guy they have to look to possibly sub out of the game because you don't wanna risk a red card. Because right now in the battle, any red card, any situation where a player's risking missing the rest of tonight, as well as the upcoming game, is dangerous, especially a guy with 12 goals on the season. Especially for Orange County as well. They're fighting for that home playoff spot as well. They don't want to be missing their leading scorer in very important games, which could very well happen if he picks up another yellow. Free kick coming, two-man wall for the Monarchs. Looks like Quinn's gonna stand over this one again. She got Duke and Forrester right there. Quinn's gonna look for Hume. Ball in towards the near post, bounces in, and Putna collects. Dangerous ball there from Orange County. Extremely dangerous ball, and that's where you hope that guy in the front zone on top of the 18 for the Monarchs can clean that ball up. So I'm not really sure where that person was there. Ball's almost taken from Portillo. He's able to get it back. Plua looking forward to Rowe. Hume has the height on him. Duke in towards Holtz. Holt gets him to go backwards. Again, we've seen that throughout the night. You always want to push Seaton and Jones away from your goal. They are more dangerous when they face you up and can face your goal, but if you have their back to your goal, that is where you want them. Contour. Miscommunication there with Duke. Monarch's gonna go quickly. Blake to Portillo. Mulholland calling for it. Portillo doesn't see him. Elects to play it at Ryden. Ryden's gonna take some green in front of him. Tries to slip it in through to Schmidt. And a nice idea there. Maybe not the, quite the pass that Ryden was looking for. Nice idea, but I think when you play on this turf with that type of pass, it's gonna be very hard to squeeze that between those defenders and keep the ball in bounds. But it's ideas like that that the Monarchs have to look for to break this back four of Orange County down. The back four for Orange County is extremely organized, so the Monarchs are gonna need to be creative to try to break them down. The majority of the attack so far tonight for the Monarchs coming through the right side, through Powder and Blake. As you're gonna get a replay look at that, Mulhollins pulls down Orozco. Dewey. Contour. Back to Hume. Is 
as Blake, Rowe, and Powder there to apply some pressure. Giveaway by Orange County as there was really no options and no movement in front of them. Ryden's gonna try to chip it up over. Didn't quite get it under. Up over it, the defense of Orange County. But once again, that is the right idea from Kalen Ryden there. He is trying to force Orange County back, running towards their own goal. Now, could he have executed that better? Absolutely. But he has the right ideas, and he just needs us a little bit better execution. Justin, get it! Plua into Mohan. Mohan tries to go forward and knocked off the ball easily. Ball up over top, flags up. Frustration from Orange County's bench. As you can hear Orange County saying he was about a yard onside. Blake back to Holtz. Ball out wide. Powder, he's gonna race with Contour, and Contour gets there first, plays it out. Blake's gonna let it roll just in front of the bench. It'll be a throw in for the Monarchs. Quickly into Chang. Chang gets it caught under the spokes for a second. He's gonna turn. He'll open up to Mulholland. Mulholland out wide to Schmidt. Schmidt cuts in, looking back towards Powder. Good ball there. Powder inside the area. Power into Chang. Chang's shot, and he hit it with his purse. Not enough force on it to get a shot mustered on goal. And that is the position you want to find Michael Chang in. But can we flip him around and find him on the other side so that the ball is on his favored left foot, not his right foot? He is going to be extremely disappointed in himself when he goes back to watch that. Powder runs at Contour. Contour cuts it off, but a giveaway by Orange County. Monarch's keeping the pressure. Rowe's going to get an opportunity. Rowe rises high, but heads it wide. He had the pace, just didn't have the accuracy. I'm going to be honest, I didn't know Kellen Rowe had that in him. That is a extremely timed jump, and he can get that on goal. That's got a chance at falling into that back corner. Beat Orozco into the air. Ball out wide, Jones. Orange County going to try to counter. Jones going to run at Holt. Jones inside the box, cut off by the Monarchs. And a shove from behind as Jones pushes Holt and bails out the Monarchs. One of those things you do not want to be doing in a situation like that, really bailing out the Monarchs who were in a kind of an awkward position inside their own box. Schmidt into Portillo. Blake calling for it. Can he see him? He does. Opens it up. Powder making the overlapping run. Powder into Blake. Blake towards Rowe. In, slipped in. Powder inside the box, plays it across. To Schmidt. Schmidt into Portillo. Ball back to him. Still inside the 18. Chang still inside the box and cleared away finally by Orange County. Monarch still with possession. But that's a lot better from the Monarchs there in the attacking third. They're starting to be a little bit more creative, trying to find those little combination plays around the back four of Orange County, and they're starting to find a little bit more success. Now, can they just spread them out a little bit more? and find a little bit better spaces to try and get some more chances on goal. And it felt like for a minute there that it might open up as the Monarchs were simple one-two touch passing, really opening up the space. And everything was connecting on that, where in the first half it was maybe a little bit one or two, and then the connection was lost. Blake, a nice skill check to open up space as he gets around Duke. Portillo. Mohan to Ryden, into Portillo, and he's gonna play it all the way back to the keeper. Fans, the USL unveiled its elite youth platform, USL Academy. This allows clubs at all levels across the USL to develop its local youth and compete at the highest levels across the United States, including the USL Cup. For more information, visit uslsoccer.com forward slash academy. 
Football is going to be played out for a throw-in. And right there, that ball from Jack Blake, it's a ball in the space, but it's a controlled ball into Kellen Rowe's feet, and those are the type of balls you're going to want to find in the space. You don't want to play Kellen Rowe into the air against Walker Hume because he's never going to win that. Walker, he is a foot, he's a foot taller than Kellen Rowe. But if you can play those balls in the space on the ground, Kellen Rowe and Michael Chang are going to have a lot more success in keeping the ball for the Monarchs. Back stick towards Schmidt. Schmidt, he'll keep it in, trying to find Blake. He'll go back. Cuts back again, back to Blake. Blake's gonna play it in the box, looking for Rowe! Skips it across. And well read by Douay. Douay's gonna roll it out to Hume. Chang cuts it off. Chang, Mulholland's running forward, ball's not there as he saw the run late. Mulholland found himself in a lot of space. Running forward. Out wide is Seaton. It's going to go at Ryden. Shot, and it didn't have a chance. So never was able to keep that one on frame. Goal kick coming for the Monarchs. Quickly taken. I'm not sure I understand the quick one on that one. But we'll see if it progresses into something. Rowe. Quickly out wide to Blake. Maybe the Monarchs feel like they have Orange County on their heels a little bit. I mean, it, it, I like the idea, but it's tough to have eight players on their heels. If you're trying to break, break lines, that's good, but he didn't really break any lines with that quick play. Instead, the Monarchs have been under pressure there. Maybe hold the ball, allow guys to catch your breath a little bit, and then play. Riding over to Blake. Blake settles with the thigh into row. Row heavy touch as Duke's there to win the challenge. And Rowe is gonna be called for the foul on Contour. As Rowe is frustrated with the challenge, he was taken out, maybe took a little frustration out on Contour. As you can see the you late see stuff there. Rowe Ro just leaves the body in there a little bit longer, letting Contour know, hey, I'm a little frustrated, nothing wrong with that. As long as Rowe doesn't take it too far and get himself a yellow card, it's all right to show a little bit of that. And you're going to expect this game maybe to ramp up a notch on intensity as both teams really feel like they still have an opportunity to pull all three points. Ball played out of play. Pressure on Orange County. And a throw in coming for the Monarchs. Into Chang. Chang taken out by Hume. And not, not the best play there by the young defender. You have your forward, you have the forward going away from your goal. You have him under control. And now you put your team in a bad position. As you can tell in the replay here, no need to foul there. But now the Monarchs have a free kick about 25 yards out. Very dangerous position right now when Walker Hume didn't need to try and do that. Free kick coming for the Monarchs. Powder in. Portillo will stand over the free kick. Two-man wall for Orange County. Line's going to be held on top of the 18. And this is, with Noah Powder on this free kick, this is going to be looking for, you know, that bending ball bouncing between the penalty mark and the six, hoping one of the Monarchs players can get on the end of it. Powder's going to swing it in with the left foot. Drives the ball in towards Chang, cut off by Orange County. It'll be a throw in for the Monarchs. That's the right area, Landon, but the ball has to be higher to clear that first defender. Rowe gets it back out to Powder. Nice header there. Powder's going to go towards the touchline. Powder puts it in inside the box, looking for Ryden, but headed away by Orange County. Orange County's going to try to get their line. They need to clear to alleviate some pressure that they've had on them in the last five minutes or so. Schmidt. into Mohan. Mohan's going to get it back to Rowe. Mohan trying to chase it down. Hume clears. Holt with the header. Ryden. Putna. And it's going to go wide. And I'm not sure the flag 
should have stayed down in that position. Looks like he was in an offside position, but the flag stays down and a great opportunity from Orange County. As you can see, it was pretty dang close. Ryden able to get back, apply some pressure on Van Wolfgang, who's now had three opportunities to put Orange County up. And that is a great recovery run from Kalen Ryden there. He could have thought he was off sides, put his arm up and not go back, but sticks with the play, makes it extremely hard on Van Wolfgang, and Van Wolfgang misses because of that. So kudos to Kalen Ryden there for sticking with the play and not giving up. Quinn, he'll take the corner. Swung in, can't beat Jack Blake, cleared away. Not completely. Orange County's gonna go at it again. Holt rises up, or excuse me, Schmidt rises up. Monarch's gonna try to outlet, can't get it to row. And Orange County's got possession. 65th minute of play. Still scoreless. Holt's gonna chase this down towards the corner. It'll go out and be a throw in. Contour is going to come to take the big throw in for Orange County. Come on. Tuned in. 65th minute of play. Still scoreless. But you have a feeling stuff starting to ramp up as both teams now are pushing to see if they can get that game opening goal. Ball inside the box. Quinn. Battles with Mulholland, and it'll be a corner kick for Orange County. Fourth of the match, second of the second half. Ball played in, back stick, headed away by Ryden. Still inside the box, Jones, shot and high and wide. He looks like he had a big opportunity. As Ryden's frustrated beyond belief. And Powder as well. They'll be warned by Elton Garcia. Both them need to make sure they're keeping their heads. Putna, who play it forward. Jack Blake settles, but a heavy touch there. So he's going to go down. Ball played in towards Ryden. He heads it away. Mulholland out wide to Schmidt. Into Portillo. Portillo goes forward to Rowe. Rowe also a former U.S. international player, U.S. International Gold Cup winner in 2017. Free kick coming for Orange County. Nine shots for Orange County, two on goal. Seven shots for the Monarchs, one on goal. Hume. Contour. Touch inside. Pressure by the Monarchs. Chang's gonna get it up top. Plays it wide to Rowe. Out wide to Powder. Into Rowe. Rowe trying to play it forward. This Powder looks like he might have uh, the first signs of cramps. That's the right idea from Kellen Rowe there, but Michael Chang stopped that diagonal run and then made his run towards the goal. And Kellen Rowe thought he was gonna still keep making that diagonal run, but Monash are trying to find those little gaps in the, in the Orange County defense right now. Looks like the Monarchs are gonna make the first substitution of this match here momentarily. It's gonna be a Utah native, Syracuse Utah native, Kyle Coffey, University of Washington products. Hume, over to Contour. This game's really not quite ramped up to the pressure that we've seen. You have to wonder what adjustments Hamas and Alave is going to make bringing on an attacking player like Kyle Coffey. 
And to be honest, I think Kyle, Kyle Coffey is the perfect right person for this situation right now, Landon. He's that kind of guy that he can find those little pockets. He's very unassuming. And Orange County is going to lose track of where he is and where he falls into that attacking lineup. And I think he's going to find those little spaces in behind him. In towards goal, Putna collects. And one of the things that you have to wonder is, will he, will the Monarchs now having a true number nine up top, maybe more of an attacking-minded player, open things up, give away by the Monarchs. But they win it back. Portillo, almost another one. Kyle Coffey, four goals on the season in 18 appearances. Plua back to Putna. Monarchs struggling to relieve pressure. Connect! Schmidt to wide to Mulholland. Chang picks up his head. He sees Powder out wide. Powder has the legs. Powder inside to Blake. Cut off by Orozco. But it'll be a throw in coming for the Monarchs. And the substitution is Kellen Rowe. This night will be done after 70 minutes of play. You gotta wonder what the adjustment will be made in the midfields. Wonder if Blake will drop more into that attacking role as Coffey will sit up high near Chang. It's maybe what we're kind of starting to see. Confusion on the pitch. Coffee's gonna get his first touches. Be a throw in for the Monarchs. Blake into Coffee. Coffee trying to get it into Chang. Back to Blake. Blake has a foot from here, tries to put it on frame, but with his left foot, puts it wide. But that's better work from the Monarchs. That's better combination play on top of the 18. They're trying to pull those guys apart in front of the goal so they can find space to get the shot. Now, Jack Blake would have wished that that was on his, his favored right foot, but they're starting to find those spots a little bit more, Landon. Forrester opens up Jones. Jones running at the defense. Jones tries to play it in. Plua there. Back in and shot up over the bar, way up over as Quinn puts that towards frame. A bloody nose is Hume. He has blood, so he's gonna have to come off the pitch. I think that's what Hamas and Olave was asking about a little earlier. Monarchs have made one substitution. Hume is going to be off for a second. 72nd minute of play, and this is when the elevation starts to kick in. Can teams deal with the high altitude, the 4,700 feet here at Zions Bank Stadium? People always talk about going to Colorado, going to Denver, the Mile High City, but they don't realize how high it is here Schmidt, as well. He's inside the box, looking across the coffee. Own goal! Takes a deflection, and that's an own goal for the Monarchs as they take the lead here in the 73rd minutes. A lot of confusion and a great run there by Kyle Coffey to put Orange County coming at their own goal. And that is something the Monarchs did not have in the first half, Landon. They did not have those guys making those committed runs to get in front of the goal. Kyle Coffey in the game for five minutes. First thing he does, he makes that run straight to goal. The defender's facing his goal when he tries to clear it. Miss clears it right into his own goal. But that does not happen if Kyle Coffey does not make that initial run in front of the goal. And really, that's what you want to see from the guys that you bring into the game. You want to see them come in and make an impact right away. And as we take a look at the replay here, the center back facing his own goal as he's running back. Sorry, Quinn. Quinn facing his own goal. And when you're facing your own goal and you try to clear a ball, it is terrifying 
And right there, Quinn, very unlucky that that ball goes into his own goal. Sneaks past Quinn, though, and Coffey looks to be able to put that home softly. Right in front of net, but the Monarchs up 1-0 here in the 74th minutes. How's the response from Orange County? Monarchs have struggled at times, giving up goals quickly after a goal scored. Putten is going to quickly throw it out. And to be honest, to the, the Monarchs have struggled to hold leads here at home as well. They've scored quite a few early goals in games and then given those leads up. So can the Monarchs really put in a professional performance in the last 20 minutes here and close this game out? That is the sign of a true playoff team, Landon. Portillo is going to knock it forward. And allow the Monarchs to push up their back line. Now the communication becomes important for this back line. Can they stay cohesive as, a one, as one unit? And when you have five guys back there, the communication is going to be so vital, and Everybody has to know who's picking up who, who's applying the pressure, and where the other person is. But that all starts with the communication. And one of the things that we failed to note as Jones is going forward is Hume has been off the pitch this whole time. Ball inside the 18, cleared away by the Monarchs. And the, and trying to get it to coffee, but he was off the pitch during that goal. And the, the funny thing is, is that you can say Hamas and Olave was being petty about somebody bleeding on the field, but what it did was get one of their best defenders off the field for a certain period of time, and the Monarchs scored during that period of time. So it's a little bit of game, gamesmanship from Hamas and Olave there. And Quinn has been filling in in that back line alongside Orozco, former U.S. international. Contour as Hume's now got a new jersey on. Looks like he had blood on the jersey. So that was why he wasn't able to come on quickly. Forrester going forward out wide to Jones. Back to Forrester. Ball played in, cleared, and headed away by Portillo. Contour with the big throw here coming. Contour loses grip on the ball. It's one of those times where you maybe have to take off the gloves. Contour is going to play it back inside the box. Headed towards goal. And wide as Seaton rose high. Unable to direct it on frame. As, as Brian Dunseth once said, Seaton, he rose up like a salmon. Gets on the end of that ball, but, but, but is not able to finish it. This week, U.S. Soccer and Think Taylor are working to promote concussion education during Concussion Awareness Week from October 6th through October 15th. The two organizations are asking everyone to take the hashtag TT Pledge, an oath that everyone involved with the game become more aware of concussion symptoms and recovery. Visit recognizetorecover.org for more information. It's October 6th through the 15th. Jack Blake's foul. Monarch's going to go forward. With that one nothing lead, courtesy of the own goal. Kyle Coffey's going to run forward. Cut off by Orozco. Ryan's able to play it wide to Powder. Come on, Coffey! Looking to coffee. Nothing there. Van Wolfgang had opportunities, but just not able to find the nets as he's been even gifted one, but wasn't able to capitalize. Seaton. He's going to get it back. Seaton inside the 18 tries a nice flick. Holtz there to defend. But a nice idea there from Seaton as he's trying everything to get himself on the score sheet. And as you approach the last 10 minutes here of the game, Landon, the Monarchs back line, they are going to have to know where Seaton and Jones are at all times because it's little flicks and little passes like that that are so dangerous against a back five. Contour in towards Hume, headed away by Plua, but it'll be a corner kick, the fifth of the match for Orange County. Third of the second half. Essentially, every throw in here on this left side has been a long throw in, especially towards Contour. Or Hume, excuse me. 
Quinn played inside the box. Putna easily rises and collects. And now we've talked about this with David Ochoa throughout the year, Landon. Can Andrew Putna, when he gets the ball in these situations, can he kill the game off? Whereas we would see Ochoa try to play the ball quickly, but can Putna hold on to the ball a little bit longer and kill this game? Ooh, dangerous play there to get it back. Putna does a nice job. Flick there, not from not quite well enough from Chang. Forrester to Quinn. Quinn inside the box, headed away by Holtz. Yes. Coffee battling. Mulholland takes a touch off the thigh, but Forrester there. Temperature dropping here at Zions Bank Stadium, and the heat has stepped up on the pitch as both sides now battling. Warrens County trying to get one back. Mulholland gets there to get on the challenge of Forrester. So we're going to see. Coleman come on to the pitch. He's going to replace Duke. Here in the 80th minute of play. Each team's made one substitution. As Duke shares some frustrations with the fourth official. And as you can hear, Hamas Zalavi giving instructions right now to the Monarchs. They're going to switch to a 5-4-1 with Jack Blake shifting out to the right, Michael Chang over to the left, and they're going to allow Kyle Coffey to sit up by himself. As you go into the last 10 minutes here, that is an extremely defensive formation, but the guys have to execute it then, Landon. When you switch to this, you lose your numbers in the center of the field, and which could be really dangerous to the Marks because Orange County has find, found a lot of success through the middle of the field here in the second half. Monarchs have controlled pieces of the game in the midfield, especially with that five back protecting that midfield. Going back to Orozco. Orange County is going to open up here to the near side. Hume to Quinn. What a contour. You've got to expect Coffee to be working heavily up top here for the final 10 and change. And with such an important game with only 10 minutes left, I, I need to see Kyle Coffey run until he can't run anymore. You weren't in for the you weren't in for 90 minutes. You only played 20 minutes. You need to run until you can't run anymore in a game like this. Apply all the pressure you can. Contour. He'll have another long throw coming. Monarch's gonna get into the box. Hume's gonna come up and numbers forward for Orange County. Contour. He'll throw it in. Looking towards Hume. Hume heads it high, still inside the box. Schmidt able to clear. Now can the Monarchs get their lines up? Get them up as high as you can and force Orange County to come up with you. Orange County keeps their numbers forward. Hume plays it in. Mulholland with the bicycle to clear. Coffee gets it to Chang. Chang to Blake. Flag stays down. Monarchs with numbers forward. Chang inside the box. Michael Chang around the keeper. On goal. Sh scores. Michael Chang. Michael Chang might have just put the nail in the coffin as he was able to score the second here in the 83rd. What a ball from Jack Blake. Perfectly weighted in the right spot for Michael Chang to get on the end of it. And Michael Chang does the rest, but what a ball from Jack Blake there. You gotta love the finish. Calm, cool, and collected from Michael Chang. He might be cooler than the other side of the pillow on that finish. On a cold night, that's maybe not that hard. No, I'm just kidding. He was, he was collected as he did that, as you're seeing. You're gonna see a replay look from Blake perfectly into Chang, gets around the keeper and puts it back on frame. Michael Chang's 12th goal of the 2019 season. Come on, Come on, 
Coming forward inside the box, Jones. Going to get the ball back. Jones towards goal, hits side netting. And I think you thought for a second that would might have been in the goal. And the Monarchs cannot have a mental letdown after scoring a fantastic goal. As soon as that the play is restarted, you got to be tuned in and ready to go. And the Monarchs were not ready to go there. That was too easy for Orange County to get down the field and get such a good chance after a great goal. Frustration on Orange County's bench. Only one substitution made so far by both sides. Putna, high up into the air. Coffee wins the header. He challenges with Hume. Hume had all the time in the world, but Coffee came blazing in. Walker Hume should be very disappointed in himself to allow Coffee, Kyle Coffee, to win that header. Schmidt, he look to go wide to Chang. Chang's going to dance. He'll win the throw in for the Monarchs. You know, Jack Blake playing for a little something special tonight. He had a, a good friend here who's going through brain cancer, John Cottrell, here with him tonight, sitting on the bench during warm ups. You know, he's a. Uh, Tweeted out the link to that GoFundMe. He has that special friend that he just recently met trying to help him. Mulholland shot from distance, and that's going to go wide. Hume, 86th minute of play. 2 nothing Monarchs. Own goal in the 71st and chain goal in the 83rd. The difference so far. Can the Monarchs see out this game and all three points? Roscoe trying to find Jones. Powder didn't look like he got a touch. They'll say touch and Contour's gonna have a long throw in. Almost essentially a corner kick coming. Outer's going to be given a warning, it looks like. Enough is enough. And in a situation like this, at this point in the game, it's all about who wants it more, Landon. Big. Big ball coming in. Blake rises up. Second ball won by Portillo. Coffee, nice touch there. Outlets to Mulholland. Chang running forward. Chang is going to get the ball back. A foul called, but advantage played. Chang cuts in. Trying to find Blake here. Blake picks up his head, tries to play it back in. Probably could have gone to the corner as you're motioning that to kill off a little bit longer. Opportunity there for the Monarchs to waste some time here at the end of the game. Michael Chang, Jack Blake, both of them who have played excellent games tonight could have taken the ball there to the corner to waste time. And now they find themselves on the defensive end of things again. Plua goes to ground. We'll lock it out of play. You've got Chang down. Looks to be cramping up a little bit. As the trainer's going to be waved on. Tune into ESPN3 Saturday, October 19th at 1 p.m. for a special game of the week to close, close out the 2019 season. A home playoff match is at stake when the Monarchs host Sacramento Republic FC. The winner hosts a playoff match while the loser potentially goes to the playing game. Catch all the drama Saturday, October 19th at 1 p.m. on ESPN3. 88 minutes. Monarchs looking to best. Their record here at home, moved to 10, 2, and 3 at home here in the 2019 season. Ball inside the box, cut off by Portillo. Sixth corner kick of the match coming for Orange County. Come on, come on, picked up. You've got to imagine Hamas Nalave is going to use a sub here in not too long to maybe kill off a touch more of the game. Corner kick coming, Monarchs need to defend it well. Ball inside the box, punched away by Putna. And he's down on grounds. It'll be a free kick for the Monarchs. And David, we've talked about this throughout the nights, but now's when it gets kind of crazy in the schedule for both sides. Two games left after tonight for Orange County against Sacramento and Fresno, teams that are right in that mix. Two very hard games. 
Monarchs have three very tough games. Rising on Saturday, and then back home against Austin and Sacramento the following week. Now I know, I understand that those are very tough games and they're very close together, Landon, but this actually gives the Monarchs an opportunity to get on a roll against very good teams as they go into the playoffs. So some people are looking at this as a negative, but really look, let's look at it as a positive. The Monarchs could get on a very good roll against good teams, have a ton of confidence as they go in the playoffs, which is something they have sorely lacked the last few years is that confidence going into playoffs. But you do well against these teams and you definitely have that confidence. And one of those things is when you get a chance to challenge yourself against the best, you get to really prove that you're worthy of being in the playoffs. Coffee picks up his head, plays it into Mulholland. Mulholland shot wide! Wow, Luke Mulholland put some pace on that. Not able to direct it on goal as he was trying to find the third goal for the Monarchs. And as you see in the replay here, Kyle Coffey, just a little dink. Mulholland's gonna want this one back. He is gonna have nightmares about missing that goal just wide. He is so used to putting balls like that away. As Forrester's night's gonna be done. After 90 minutes, we're getting late in this match. Stoppage time coming here shortly. And Orange County throwing numbers forward. Hume sitting now along up in the attack. Looks like Orange County is going to go to three in the back here for the final couple minutes of stoppage. Players breathing hard, a few players stretching out. Because we're going to get three minutes of stoppage. And as you can see here, the ref is asking Andrew Putin to hurry up. That isn't something we ever really saw from David Ochoa. This is great work and experience from Putin to kill this game at the end here. Putin has done a good job tonight in net for the Monarchs. Header won by Orange County. Second ball, Seton. He's going to go towards Ryden. Seton battling. Monarchs applying a lot of pressure. Chang comes back to help on the defensive responsibilities. Out to Blake. Blake has a lot of space in front of him if he decides to go forward. Coffee's going to apply chase and ball back to Dewey is a little rough, but he's able to collect. Almost through one unofficially of the three. Holtz. Knocks it forward. Settled by Consor. Ryden. Good combination there for the Monarchs as they're able to ping it around and keep possession. Mohan plays it out wide to Chang. Chang has space in front of him. Alex to go to Mohan. Out wide to Blake. To Holtz. And the Monarchs can kill off a little time here. Ryden. Their Monarchs are just under a minute away from clinching a berth in the playoffs. Ball inside the box, Coffee, Again, almost there on the spots. Douay comes sliding out to win the ball. Hume up forward to win, trying to win the ball. Settles to Seton, but unable to get to his teammates. Legs look dead for Orange County as it's kind of just deflating Legs look dead for everybody right now. Two very hard performances from both sides tonight, Landon. Both teams left it all out there, and when they walk off the field, they're going to be extremely tired. Orange County's 4-1-0 in the last five. Monarchs 3-2-0. Coffee plays it forward to Blake. Blake takes a heavy touch, and he knew he didn't have the legs to go forward. So he's going to stretch things out. It'll be a throw-in for the Monarchs. But I don't think that throw-in's gonna happen. Center referee Elton Garcia blows his whistle. 90 minutes of soccer. And the Monarchs take a 2-0 victory over Orange County and officially clinch 
a 2019 playoff berth. First of all, Land, I'd like to say congrats to the Monarchs for clinching that playoff berth, but the work is not done. Really, the work begins now because the playoffs is another season. And another season will begin, but the Monarchs still have three games here in this regular season and three games to see if they can get a game back here at Zions Bank Stadium. And that's almost a must. See if you can get it. Next game's against Phoenix Rising. Phoenix Rising, in theory, doesn't have much to play for. Already clinched the number one seed, but they're actually approaching the record for goals and victories in a season. So they've got a chance to set some records in the USL. So I would expect them to still have something to play for, especially down in Phoenix. But this is a great opportunity for the Monarchs to go on the road against a very good team who might not put out their best lineup, but if you can get a result on the road at this point in the season against Phoenix, then this really gives you confidence that, hey, if we don't get that home playoff berth, we can go on the road in the playoffs and get a result. Yeah, and that's something you can show to the rest of the USL championship that you're capable of winning games at a playoff caliber place or at a playoff location. We're gonna toss it to a break and we'll be back with final thoughts from this two nothing victory for the Monarchs. America First Credit Union, ensuring the financial health of local families and businesses for 80 years. Tonight's match is presented by Steward Healthcare. Steward, world-class healthcare where you live. Visit steward.org. Mountain America, start preparing for your future today with Pitcher Perfect savings accounts from Mountain America. They offer term deposits, youth accounts, retirement savings, and more. Visit macu.com for banking that always puts the best team on the pitch. Zions Bank is for you. A lot can happen when your sidekick is a dog. Kicker, kicker. Okay, I got this. That's why you use Zelle in the Mountain America app. It makes sending and receiving money fast and easy. So Kicker and I can keep the adventure going. Zelle is now in the Mountain America mobile app. Quickly send and receive money from almost anyone with a bank account in the U.S. Kicker, my sleeping bag. I've got this. All with the convenience and security of the Mountain America app. For the past 42 years, and with over 28 million sold, more people have put their hard-earned money on a Ford F-Series truck than any other pickup in America. Yeah, I'd say that's money well spent. It's Ford Truck Month, America. Time to join the stampede. Now get a Ford F-150 with 0 for 72 financing plus 1,000 trade assist cash, or get over 13,000 in total savings. with the huge 2-0 victory. So you're getting a shot of the western, northwestern sky here in Harriman, Utah. Let's check out the Michael Chang goal, the game winner, the nail in the coffin. As Jack Blake settles nicely, plays a beautiful ball into Chang. Chang gets around the keeper and sends that one home with the left foot. 
right over a sliding Van Wolfgang. And that's the way the Monarchs really seal things up as you're gonna see another look at this one. I feel like I have to let you watch that in all of its glory. That pass was on points. Or as the youth are saying, on fleek. Monarchs, like I mentioned, 2 nothing victory tonight against Orange County. And they move into that position, that great position, the place that they need to be moving up the Western Conference with three games remaining. And really, this gives them a lot of confidence. This gets them into the playoffs. This moves them up the table in the Western Conference. And ultimately, it, it, we're, they're working towards that home playoff spot. And this is the first step towards that. Let's check out the three remaining games for the Monarchs here in the 2019 season before the playoffs start as they've now officially clinched a playoff berth. But let's check out those three games popping up on screen right now. As you can see, Saturday, so in a couple days, at Phoenix Rising, 8.30 p.m. kick on ESPN Plus should be a dandy. And then on the road, or excuse me, back home to finish the season against Austin Bold, 7 p.m. next Wednesday, and then Saturday at 1 p.m. against Sacramento Republic. And that's all the Monarchs have left. Three games, three playoff opponents, and three challenges to see if the Monarchs can rise to the challenge. And really, this was a playoff game tonight, and this really challenged them and proves, hey, they tested themselves against a very good team, and they showed, hey, we got in the playoffs, we belong in the playoffs, and like I said, it's the first step to getting that home playoff spot. Monarchs 14-10-7, 49 points on the season, jump Orange County up into that fourth place spot, Orange County with 48 points, 13-10-9 and nine on the season now. But an exciting, good victory for the Monarchs. And now you have to take that confidence moving forward to the best team in the USL Championship. And yes, it is on the road. It is a vital game. But a lot of people are looking at that as a negative. I want to look at it as a positive, that if they can go down there, get a result, it's going to give them so much confidence if they have to go on the road in the playoffs. Thank you for tuning in tonight here on ESPN. Plus, from our wonderful production team that makes this possible, David Horsheim, Landon Southwick. We'll catch you next Wednesday night here on ESPN Plus, back here at Zions Bank Stadium. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.